Hi, Mariano Gomez, the Dynamics GP Blockster here. Today I want to show you how you can leverage Power Virtual Agents with your on-prem enterprise resource management system in order to actually do some really cool, awesome stuff with this technology. As my ERP, I'll be using Microsoft Dynamics GP. My backend is Microsoft SQL Server. Any ERP configuration that's on-prem that you have the capability of uh, providing access via the gateway, the on-prem data gateway, you can actually leverage this technology to provide some more capabilities to your end users. So let's see how that is done. So this is um, my Connect gadget in Microsoft Dynamics GP. I'm just going to maximize it for the benefit of this presentation. And I'm going to actually use Andrea to basically query information about my customers, vendors, or even my items in the inventory. So if I start here by typing hi, Andrea basically introduces herself and so there's a greeting process. And then she asks me what I want, what I want to do today. So I'm going to say initially, I'm going to get a customer balance. And uh, here we have some sample data. So Aaron Fit 001 happens to be the sample data for Aaron Fitz Electrical. So that's uh, the customer ID. And I'm just going to hit enter here. And this will launch a power automate uh, flow that basically goes and retrieves that data for, retrieves that data for me and present it back using Power Virtual Agents. Once the bot is completed, this particular topic, it will basically present me with a, a rating experience. So I'm just going to go and hit excellent here. And then it asks me if I can be helped with something else. I'm just going to go ahead and hit yes here. The next thing I'm going to say, okay, is get vendor balance. Likewise, once I type in the vendor balance, I can then be presented with the same experience where I can enter a vendor ID. And let's say we want to query advanced office systems. So that's basically advanced 001. And you can write these bots however to, to um, search for whatever criteria you want based on how your backend system is set up. But in particular, I'm using the vendor ID. It's straightforward enough. It goes and retrieves that balance for that vendor and then presents me with uh, basically a way to rate my experience. Once we get done with this, we can basically use um, Andrea and start the process all over again to present us with some more information. So this is exactly what we will be building today from scratch. So stay tuned and let's see how it's done. So back in Power Virtual Agents, we already have a bot called Andrea. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a new bot so you can see what that process looks like. And um, I'm going to assign it a name. In this case, it's going to be Crystal. That's going to be the name of our new bot. Here in options, you got to ensure that you select the proper environment for this deployment, because otherwise your Power Automate flows and what's not will not necessarily work. You want to make sure that your Power Automate flows are also set up inside a solution. So those are things that you need to consider. I will put links uh, below this video for you to go and uh, check out the documentation on how to get started with this. Or you can also check my previous video, which I will also add as a card to this particular section. So I'm just going to hit create here. And that's just going to work through the process of setting up that bot for me. Okay, so setting up a bot the second time around is a pretty quick process. It's just the first time around when you're provisioning, um, you need to be very careful and uh, very cognizant of the time it takes to set up that bot. So now there's a couple things I'm gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna start by doing is I'm gonna customize the greeting. So here I'm just gonna go and select the greeting that is set up with Crystal and we will see how we can customize this. So I'm gonna just get rid of this and um, the only one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically change this and say, Hi, I'm Crystal, comma, a Fabricam, which is my sample company, virtual agent, okay, or Fabricam's virtual agent. Then here, um, I'm going to add addition, an additional message. I'm going to leave this as is. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually ask a question. And I'm going to ask the um, user, what can I help you with today? 
Okay. So here, what we want to do is we want to provide some choices. And in this particular case, I want to type get customer balance. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type get vendor balance. And one thing to keep in mind here is when you're looking at this, as soon as you start entering these options, Power Virtual Agents create the actual conditions for these. So as you can see, if it gets customer balance, typically is expecting you to execute an action. And in this case, it's expecting you to execute an action here. It is then expected that when I add a node here, in this case, I probably want to go and call another topic. And that topic is basically going to be a topic that allows me to go and inquiry on that customer balance and provide some information. So let's see how that is done. Here, I'm going to go to topics, or I'm going to actually hit save here first before I leave the topic. And I'm going to go to topics over here, and I'm going to set up a new topic. In this one, we're just going to get the customer balance and obtain, we're going to give it a description, customer balance from Microsoft Dynamics GP. Okay, so the trigger phase, we can actually add a few. Get customer balance, this could be once. What's my customer balance? That could be another one. Show me my customer balance. That could be a third one. Now, we already have those three topics, or those three trigger phrases. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the authoring canvas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually ask the user to provide a customer ID. So I'm just going to type in which customer ID would you like or actually, which customer would you like to inquiry? So the next thing here is we're going to obtain a um, response from the user. I'm going to actually ask a question. Which customer would you like to inquiry? All right. So in this case, we're not going to uh, provide a response. But what we're going to do is we're going to simply say this is going to be the user entire response. That response is going to be saved as a variable, which we can change the name here. And I do suggest you do this. And in this case, that variable, I'm going to call it customer ID. And what we will do from here then is once we get the customer ID, we will want to pass this information over to a Power Automate flow in order to go and inquire that information out to ERP database. And from this, we're going to do call an action, and then we're going to set up a uh, Power Automate. I already have one for the customer, so I'm just going to use this one and then explain what it does. The customer name is going to go here for customer ID, and in this case, we're going to return the customer balance. But let's take a look at this flow. So if I click on the flow details, what this is going to do is it's going to basically do a couple of very simple things. It's going to use the Power Virtual Agents trigger. And as you can see, I already have a, an input that is coming from Power Virtual Agents called Customer Name. Well, in my case, it's Customer ID. It doesn't matter what the field name is. I'm actually going to then obtain that balance. I'm, for that, I'm going to initialize a quick variable called Formatted Balance. It's going to be a string. And the value is going to be prefixed with the dollar sign. Now, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually use the SQL get roles action to connect to my on-prem ERP into my company database and the particular table that holds the information that I need. But I can't actually just retrieve every single customer. What I want to do is I want to retrieve the customer number for which the user is inquiring. So I'm just going to set a restriction called customer number equals whatever customer number was passed in. Then out of that, what I'm doing is I'm actually retrieving the first row for uh, the result that was returned. Since customer IDs are unique, I don't need to actually create um, for each action that goes and retrieve just one record. So once we're done there, out of that, what we want to do is just return the customer balance column as uh, part of the row that was um, passed back. And then finally, what we'll do here is we will make sure that if this response is null or if the, uh, if the response is not equal to null, we will then format the balance, meaning if this customer ID was found in the database, in the particular table that we inquired, 
we'll make sure that we format, format this currency to basically transform that value into a formatted number uh, using English, US as, um, as the locale. So the other thing then is we're then gonna assign that information to the formatted balance variable. And um, in case we didn't find it, what we wanna do is we wanna just pass back a value of not available that we're gonna action on. So that's pretty cool because then the next thing we do is re return the content of that variable formatted balance to the customer balance output that we defined for Power Automate. So that's good because here's a couple things that we need to keep in mind. Since the customer balance can have a, an NA, what we wanna do then is we wanna create a condition here. And then we're gonna action on the customer balance. If it's equal to NA, we wanna give the user a message that says customer not found. And then maybe something as um, try again. Okay, and then probably what we want to do here is um, end that conversation. We can actually end it with a survey or there is another interesting one where you can go to another topic within the list of topics and that could be basically a start over or we can actually tell it to confirm failure or something like that. So I'm just going to tell it to start over. So that basically is going to cre create a redirect to that topic. And in this particular case, if the value is other than NA, meaning it returned a value, what we want to do is we want to show a message that says something like customer, and then we can put the customer ID that was entered is, and then we can say customer balance. So that's pretty cool. And then we can redirect this to a small survey when it's done. So that's basically a good way to probably end the conversation. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna save this and test this particular bot. If I type get customer balance, remember that was my trigger phase. Okay, so basically I like this because it's telling me exactly what step I'm in. And I'm gonna type in Aaron Fit 001. So that's basically the customer ID that I'm interested in. That's gonna go and retrieve that balance. So basically here now the bot is gonna ask me if I have this answers my question and I'm going to say yes. And then I am actually sent back to rate my experience. And in this case, I'm going to say it was excellent. Okay. And then I can say, can I help you with anything else? Then there we go. Go ahead. I'm listening. And I can always type things like get customer balance and start the process all over again, but that's not what I'm interested in. So basically once we're done here, I'm going to go back to topics to the list of topics. And I'm going to go to the greeting topic. And what I'm going to do here then is because I already have the, the customer balance topic, I can go to the canvas, the authoring canvas for this topic. And then I can now link up this get customer balance condition to another topic. And that particular topic would be the get customer balance topic. So that was pretty cool, pretty simple because I'll, I automatically get redirected. Now I'm gonna show you some real convenient stuff. So I'm gonna hit save here and I'm gonna go back to my list of topics and I'm gonna take the get customer balance topic. I can actually make a copy of this one. And now once I make a copy, I can then um, enable it first and foremost. And what I can do then is I can edit this particular copy and then I can change this to get vendor balance because they do very similar things, right? So that's good. And then I can change the trigger, get my vendor balance. What's my vendor balance? I can say, show my vendor balance. And I can change this to get my, get vendor balance. So I have three trigger phrases that I just customized from a previous topic that I had. So uh, learn to use some of the advantages here that you have in our virtual agents to simplify the work and make sure that you are uh, saving as much time as possible. So the other thing here I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this to get vendor, uh, which vendor would you like to inquiry? I'm gonna change this instead of using customer ID, I'm gonna change this for vendor ID, okay? And then in the action, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this particular action. And basically I'm gonna call the Power Automate action that's going to obtain the vendor balance for me. So here I have the vendor balance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in that variable vendor ID. 
And that's going to trigger this flow, which does a very similar thing to the customer balance. And uh, now I'm able to link back this to, to the messages that I have. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all this stuff. I don't know if I can link it automatically, probably not. So I'm just going to remove it and make life a lot simpler than, than trying to troubleshoot or trying to relink this information. So the same thing, my Power Automate will return a value of NA if the vendor was not found. So all I'm going to do here is add a condition once more, and then I'm going to select the vendor balance. If it's equal to NA, then we will tell the user and show a message here that says vendor, why not? We can always pass this, uh, was not found. Then we can say something, uh, please try again. And uh, what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to end this with a, another topic. So basically, we'll tell it to go to another topic. And that's going to be basically to start over. Okay. And right here, if the vendor balance is existing, we're going to show a message that says vendor and then vendor ID balance is, and then we show the balance. Okay. Perfect. So what are we going to do here is end this with a survey. And uh, there we go. That's our vendor balance topic. So now we can test this out and we can say get vendor balance. So there we go. So it asked me which vendor I want to inquiry. So I'm going to just type advanced 001. And this will actually fire up that uh, Power Automate flow that we had before. And hopefully it will retrieve the information that we want. There you go. And then did that answer my question? Let's say yes, it did answer my question. And we can actually put a rating here. And then we're gonna say, yes, I'm listening. So we can say again, get vendor balance. But what if we type in somebody that uh, doesn't exist in the database? So let's just put some random set of characters here. And then it's gonna tell me that the vendor doesn't exist and it will throw me back to the topic, okay? And basically start over. Here we can actually say, uh, once again, get vendor balance and get customer balance and move on. Okay, so now we're gonna just reset this topic here, then go back to home. And finally, the last thing we're gonna have to do for this is publish this um, bot. In this case, we're gonna take Crystal and uh, make her public. So we're just gonna click publish here. And this process basically uh, makes our bot available and the last changes that we included available to, um, to everybody. So the next thing I wanna show you here is um, under manage if we go to channels we can then um, basically look at the channel for a custom website and there is one particular thing that i want to copy out of here which is the address information for that bot so if you basically select this url and you post it outside of um, in the browser then that would be an endpoint to your particular chatbot. So now that we are there, what I want to do now is want to embed this in Microsoft Dynamics GP. So for that, I've done a couple things before and a couple of videos before that show how that process works, but we're going to cover it one more time here. Then we're going to go here to program files, Microsoft Dynamics GP uh, 2018 in this case, and I'm going to look for my Dexini file. So here in Dexini, you're going to want to make sure that you have the debug connect set to true and the connect test URL. That's going to be my uh, bot endpoint. So I'm just going to click and save that. I'm going to click save here. And then um, we're going to launch the uh, launch Microsoft Dynamics GP. So all I'm going to do here is click uh, new and uh, relaunch my app. So hopefully my services are available. There we go. Sign in. And then what I will want to do here is I will want to select a um, user ID and a company and just uh, log into the system. And once the application launches, then I should have um, my connect gadget should now show Crystal instead of Andrea, which is the previous one that I had. So this is perfect. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to maximize or go multi-column with this. And then I'm going to type in hi. So that should initiate the bot process again. And then uh, Crystal should point me into the actions that I can take. So I'm going to get a customer balance, for example. 
which customer would you like, like to inquiry? I can say now Aaron um, Fit001 and hit send. And then now uh, Crystal should come back with the balance for Aaron Fit001. So this is a good way, again, to incorporate the power of chatbots with Power Virtual Agents uh, with Microsoft Dynamics GP or any ERP that you're currently running either on premise or in the cloud. Uh, if you have those extensibility capabilities, in this case, we have the ability to do the connect gadget here, but if you have the extensibility capabilities, you should be able to um, make this work. So I hope you found this uh, session or this presentation interesting and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.